Happy Monday, everyone, and happy early 4th of July. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today with 4th of July tomorrow. I know that puts a time crunch. A lot of people have the holiday weekend off, so I'm super excited you're here today. My name is Beverly McCullough. I am from Flamingo Toes, and I am super excited to be sewing through the Meadowland quilt with you guys. This is the quilt that we're doing, and it's such a fun one, and I'm having a blast sewing through the different sections. We've done several sections so far, and this week we are on the Star Blocks. So I'm excited. I want to hear all about your plans for the 4th and what you guys are doing. Um, it's hot here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not having a barbecue or anything like that um, we are gonna have just a nice low-key day tomorrow and then we're going to go to see fireworks there's a fireworks show in a nearby town called Cross Plains and they put them on at the high school and we just sit in the back of our truck and in the parking lot of the school and it's wonderful it's so nice so that's our big exciting plans for the night <laughs> but it'll be a really relaxing day so I'm really looking forward to it. It's super fun. So I'm excited to be here with you guys today. Um, I'm just now realizing I did not prep the giveaway. I always do that. Okay, so I know what I'm doing, and um, <laughs> but I don't have the winner from last week. So I'll figure that out in a minute, but let's just talk about all the fun things. Oh, and I was going to let you guys know. So my Monday videos are our tutorials so long, but I also catch you up on everything going on in the blog. So, and I know sometimes you wanna just skip to the tutorial part. So what I'm going to start doing is after the fact, um, if you're watching later, that's, uh, this is gonna help you. If you're watching live, then I'm sorry. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoy just joining me live for the fun of it. Um, but what I'm going to do is in the comments, I'm going to start noting um, like in the, uh, the, the video description when the actual tutorial starts so it'll say tutorial starts at whatever two minutes or 15 minutes and 22 seconds or whatever the case may be so I'm gonna start putting that in there so that you know if you're sewing up a, a quilt later and I'll try and go back and do that for my um, past sew alongs too so that you can kind of skip past the stuff and head straight to the sew along or you can just watch the whole thing and um, enjoy that too so it's casual Monday because it is the 4th of July weekend and also I got some cute new shirts so this I'm gonna back up so you can see this is the quilt block look how cute it is so this is um, a shirt from my friend Amanda Castor uh, she's a Riley Blake designer and an amazing quilt designer her uh, company is called material girl quilts I have it linked for you today in the video description to her apparel section but definitely check out her quilt patterns. I have now three of her shirts. I have this cute one. I have one that is her Radiance Star pattern. That's my favorite. And then I have another one of hers that's Flying Geese. And I love them so much, you guys. They're so comfortable. They're quilty, so you feel like, hey, I'm representing for the quilters out there. And they're just really, really cute. So definitely check out her apparel shop, Material Girl Quilts, linked in the video description today, because she's awesome. Let's see who's here. Hi, Linda. Roxanne is here from Greenville, Tennessee. Are you dying of heat too, Roxanna? It's toasty here. <laughs> and Helen's here. Uh, Connie's here. Katarina's here. Oh, I think I missed some people. Oh, Molly. Molly said she loves the videos. Makes Mondays better for sure. Molly, thank you. Love that. Ginger's here. Alicia, Judy. Uh, let's see. Nancy, Leslie, Janet, Bambi, Leona. April. Um, hey, Christopher Thompson. <laughs> we have a star with us, you guys, today. Christopher Thompson just popped in to say hi. We love Christopher. <laughs> and you, I know you guys love Christopher because every time I bring him up, you're like, I love Christopher. He's the best. <laughs> so yes, we all agree. Christopher's the best. <laughs> Tony's here from Oregon. What's your weather like, Tony? Um, okay, tell me what you guys are planning on doing for the 4th. I want to hear all your adventures, even if it's like curling up and staying in the air conditioner. That is a good adventure. <laughs> hey, Deborah, Janet's here. <laughs> so excited to be with you guys. Okay, so we're sewing up these cute star blocks. 
Look how fun they are. Oh, let me show you up uh, our top camera because that's a little bit easier. For some reason, that other camera kind of washes out. So these are our cute star blocks. They're little bitty guys and they go together really fast. And the beauty of them is that they, um, they're easy. <laughs> you, there are several of them. There are, what is it, five per row, and you're gonna make four rows, so you have to make 20 of them. But um, you can chain piece them, and I'm gonna give you some tips on the directional parts, which really you only have to worry about the directional stuff. I mean, these are directional, but um, the, uh, the stripes, and the stripes are super easy to do this way. So I have some tips for you guys about that. But first I want to show you my cute finish of the haunted, let's see, haunted Halloween mini quilt. So Fat Quarter Shop does a couple mystery quilt alongs every uh, summer. They're both free. One is Halloween and that's usually in June. We just finished that one. And then the next one is Christmas. So here is my Halloween one. I'm going to back up. Look how cute it is. It's called Haunted, ha Haunted Halloween, and I made it up in my Haunted Adventure fabrics. So I'm gonna hold this a little closer so you can see. But well, let's do the top camera. So here, um, here it is. This is my Haunted Adventure fabrics that are out right now. You can see that green star a little bit better when it's not washed out. Um, hey Sue, she says she's caught up and working on the stars now. You're a rock star, Sue. And Kathy Holden's here. Nice, Kathy. So this is such a fun quilt. It's free, um, and we sewed up each section a week at a time for the month of June. Look at this moon with the bat. Like, how cute is this? Wouldn't this be a great, like, pot holder or, some, or just even a pillow in and of itself? It's so fun. And then I had to do a black kitty, of course, and then I gave her a little green floral collar. And then I did an orange castle with spider webs in the windows. Oops, hitting the mic, sorry. And then I put kitties in the attic because <laughs> it's just cute, right? I love the black kitties. So this is fun. And then I quilted it on my baby lock regalia. I used a spider um, and web edge to edge pantograph. You can kind of see, oh, you can really see it here. So it's got a cute little spider in it and then the web, and it's called Along Came a Spider, and you can find it most places, but it's really fun. So, and I love the binding. The binding is uh, from Haunted Adventure as well. It's a little multi-stripe, so cute. And then on the back, I put the main of the collection, one of the mains, um, and this is the mint, and I thought it looked cute with the colors on the front. Not that you'll, <laughs> it's gonna go on the wall, so I won't see the back too much, but I'll know it's there, and I love it. <laughs> Um, so this is really cute and you can see that cute quilting now with the little spider webs and you can see the cute uh, designs. Look at this fun little camper. Let's see if I can get it closer there. It's got a spider web, <coughs> excuse me, a spider web on it and crows in the trees and then, oh look at this one. Oops. This one has got um, cute little trucks and camper with a kitty in the window and then there you can see that little skeleton flamingo that got its own print so really fun hang on one sec <laughs> okay I'm back my door wasn't closed <laughs> so here we are so cute right okay so this is a free pattern you can find it at on my I have it linked in my blog to all my weeks of the sew along it's really cute and so fast to sew up you guys and you could also alter it there's some really fun inspiration in the fat quarter shop facebook group where people have added borders different things like that so join the kimberly stitch squad that's their facebook group and you can check out all the inspiration but i made mine exactly the way they called for it because i just love it and i'll put it on the wall i can't wait for fall is it fall yet <laughs> Summer is the one season that I'm like, okay, let's hurry up and get through this one so we can get to the other good ones. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But that's the scoop with the Haunted Halloween Mystery Quilt. And it's time to get ready for the Christmas one. It was supposed to kick off tomorrow, um, and it might still say that on their blog, but it kicks off 
next Tuesday. They had to wait for some of the fabric to get in. It's called Evergreen, which gives you a little nod as to what it's going to be. <laughs> it's a really cute mini, you guys. I think it finishes at 31 by 37. Um, it's going to look adorable. And it's, uh, I'm excited. I've started mine already and it's really cute. So I'm sewing with a fabric collection that's a Riley Blake collection called Twas. So it's like Twas the Night Before Christmas. So it's just shortened to Twas. It's really great vintage elements in it. It's so cute. Santa's and oh my gosh, you guys are going to love it. Um, and I'm pairing it with my Dainty Daisy uh, Alpine because I needed a lot of green for that. Again, a hint at what's coming in the in the mystery quilt but so I paired my Alpine Dainty Daisy with her collection they go perfectly together so that starts next week I have that linked in the video description for you guys as well so that you can go check it out it's a free sew along grab your Christmas fabrics in your stash or go shopping and see if you find something new that you love and sew along with me I would love it <laughs> it's gonna be really fun okay so that is Haunted Adventure Stripe bindings are the best. Yay. Okay, Deborah would like a kitty update. You guys, I almost brought her again today because I'm obsessed. <laughs> it's been a long time since we've had a kitty, and so she's just the best thing ever. She's doing really, really well, um, and we've decided to name her Adelaide. So if you ever saw Guys and Dolls, um, one of the main characters in that, I love a good musical. You guys probably know that. And so one of the main characters in Guys and Dolls is Adelaide. There's even a song about her, which we've been singing to our kitty. Um, she isn't super appreciative of our musical talent yet, but she'll learn. <laughs> so, and we're calling her Addie for short, but um, it seems to fit her. We went back and forth on names all over the place, but Adelaide is what we've landed on. So she's very cute and it's a very fancy name. She's a good girl. She's adjusting well and doing really well. So thank you guys. Hey Jane, glad you're here. <laughs> oh, Carrie's here. Hey Carrie. Oh, she was watching reruns of Downton Abbey on her rainy day in Nova Scotia. Well, you guys need the rain up there. And I am also doing a rewatch of Downton Abbey, Carrie. So same. <laughs> Okay, I want to make sure, oh, the other thing I wanted to tell you guys is that I'm doing a shop sale for the holiday. It's, it was uh, started on Saturday and it's good. It ends Wednesday night at midnight, my time central. So, and I put all of my patterns on sale 20% off. So that's quilting, cross stitch, embroidery, and it even includes the Meadowland kit since there is a pattern in that. <laughs> so you guys can pick up patterns that you've been wanting to make if you're gonna sew along with our Spooky Lane sew along that starts um, the last week of, let's see, the last week of July, then grab the Spooky Lane pattern um, and it's gonna be really fun. So definitely go check out the shop. I've got it linked in the video description today so that you can go check it out and um, and sew along with me for some fun things. <laughs> so that's super exciting. And, um, oh, Carrie likes the name. Yay! <laughs> Christopher Thompson, I love you a bushel and a peck and a bushel and a peck and a hug around the neck. Yay! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, Leslie, yay, thanks. I'm so glad you guys like her name. She seems to you not know, care one way or the other, let's be honest. <laughs> but we love her. Oh my gosh, we're just obsessed with her. Um, Leona said, what would be your recommendation from my patterns to teach someone to quilt? Well, I have a really great sampler that is called the Friendship Sampler. It's a mini quilt, but it has nine different blocks. So there's several different block styles that you can practice in there. That would be a really great one. Um, my, let, let me think. My Vintage Stars is a fun quilt pattern also and so is Windows to the Garden. Those are really fun. If you are a very, very beginner, I would encourage you guys to go to Riley Blake Designs. They have a sew along called the Building Blocks Quilt. I did, they've done two versions of it. And the first one was maybe two years ago. And I sewed along with that one. I didn't sew along with the second one, but each one of them is made up of nine blocks and they teach you all kinds of skills like, and they build on those skills. So you start with a certain type of block and then eventually by the end of the quilt, you're using those same skills, but in a different way. Um, and there's video tutorials for all of them. So if you want to practice some blocks, 
definitely go to Riley Blake Designs, go to the blog and find the building blocks so along. And that is a really, really great quilt to kind of get your feet wet and it's free. So it's a fun free sew along. So yay, I hope that helps Leona. <laughs> Um, okay, are you guys, let me double check here on my list and make sure that I didn't forget anything. Okay, one more thing is I want to remind you guys about my sweet farm quilt. This is this quilt right here. Um, it was a, it's a free pattern. It came out a couple weeks ago and it's made up in my Dainty Daisy fabric. This is what basic with Riley Blake design and it's a pixel quilt, which means that it is made up of squares that make a picture and I love it. It turned out so fun. So if you're feeling like you need to do some barn inspiration still, um, definitely check that out. I have it linked today and it's the Sweet Farm Quilt and it'll take you to my blog and then I have the download for you and it has all the information about how much Dainty Daisy you need and um, how to sew it up. It's a full pattern so and it's a freebie. So I'd love for you guys to check that out and if you make it up definitely tag me and use the hashtag sweet farm quilt. So easy be oh and tag Riley Blake designs too because they're super awesome and wrote up the pattern for me. So it was really fun. All right you guys let's talk about giveaways. And <laughs> yay I'm so glad. Hey Lisa. Uh, Dorothy said, I think your Make It Mini book would be good for a beginner because it has quite a few different blocks, but the projects are small and doable. Dorothy, you're a genius. I don't know why I didn't think of that. So I have a book called Make It Mini. It's all 13 mini quilts, and they all have a touch of embroidery, but they don't have to have the embroidery. So, Leona, you want to check that out. It's in my shop, which is linked in the video description today, and it is a good way to practice a quilt in a smaller size as well. There's, and you get the book, you get several patterns at once, so you can kind of pick and choose and make several. So, thanks, Dorothy. You're very clever. All right, you guys, it's hot today. All right, let's do giveaways. So every week I have a giveaway and it's my way of saying thank you guys so much for tuning in. I know you have a lot of choices and a lot of options for teachers and tutorials and sew alongs and so I just love you guys. I love our community here and so we do a giveaway every week just to say, for me to say thank you guys. <laughs> and last week was the halfway point in our sew along so we did a little bit bigger giveaway. So let me show you our cute giveaway. So this is last week's giveaway and it is a quilt kit for this gorgeous quilt. So this is the Sweet Land of Liberty quilt. The fabric is from Danny Mogstead. It's out right now and the quilt is 44 by 53 and the pattern is, it inc the kit includes everything that you need for the quilt top and the binding. So you'll just have to buy backing and um, batting. <laughs> Sorry, my computer did something weird. So the kit has this gorgeous panel in the section, in the middle, which has all of these uh, pretty florals, and then you'll piece these stars and stripes that are on the top and bottom and sew it all together. And if you're not the winner this week, then you can find this kit in stores now. It's called the Sweet Land of Liberty. Look at how cute these prints are in this collection. Look at this bicycle and these little, oh my gosh, in the mason jars. I love it. I need a little bicycle that has a flag on it. I don't ride bicycles, so it would just sit there. <laughs> okay, so this is really cute. So give me two seconds and I will get our winner because I am, um, I made a mistake and I didn't, um, I didn't write down the winner from last week. <laughs> So this will be very fast, very, very fast. Okay. And the winner is Rhonda Collier. I don't have you written down, Rhonda, but you're our winner from last week. So yay, Rhonda, congratulations. Um, if I don't already have your address, either way, send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com, and I will get your prize out to you. Obviously, you won't get it by tomorrow, but you will get it in plenty of time to do it. Well, you know, we all love uh, Americana stuff, so you could leave it up year-round if you want. <laughs> 
So in keeping with the theme of the Americana, because tomorrow is the fourth, I, oh, I already did that. I, the price for this week is the Liberty box from this year. So Fat Quarter Shop does the Sew Sampler box every month, which is a monthly subscription. But then periodically throughout the year for the holidays, they do a really cool specialty box. Um, and you can get that or not, depending upon whether, you know, even if you're not a Sew Sampler member. So it's really fun. This is this year's box. So I know it again, we'll get to you after the fourth, but it's really cute, you guys. And if you haven't opened your, if you have this already and you don't want to see what's in it, then just, you know, close your eyes. <laughs> so it's called Sweet Land of Liberty. And you make sure you sign up for the Fat Quarter Shop emails because then you'll be notified as to when you get these things. So I just found this one on top. Look how cute this is. It's Lori Holt's little cute cuts ruler and it is a four and a half inch ruler. Like how, my ceiling fan is kind of shining on it. How cute is this for trimming all of your half square triangles and your, um, your little stitch and flip blocks? I love it. It's darling. So that is in here. Another Lori product. product. This is a measuring tape with cherries on it. So cute. There is a beautiful fat quarter bundle of Stateside by Sweetwater. Cute patriotic fabrics there. There are um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fat quarters in here. Then there are some red, white, and blue pins. Look how fun those are. Love it. And then there is some cute coasters, and they say Land of the Free. Um, it's a Liberty Box coaster set. It's a Fat Quarter Shop limited edition exclusive, and they're the really nice, um, like, stone coasters with the felt on the back. Oh, and look, the other one has fireworks on it. How cute is this? I love it. So that is... And then this is the free pattern that comes with those fabrics. So I don't know what else you need. You just need binding. And it makes a 27 and a half by 36 and a half. Oh, and you'll need backing uh, quilt. And look at how cute that is. So you can put it up on your wall or on your front door. And you have everything you need. Pamela says she loves Sweetwater fabric. Yeah, this is a really sweet bundle. Okay, so that's this week's prize, you guys. All you have to do to enter is leave a comment, and that is on my Facebook group, on the video, or on YouTube, and you can do it live or whether you're watching later in the week. I'm going to um, switch cameras while I'm on the struggle bus putting this box back together. <laughs> so definitely leave a comment, and I will send you this cute Liberty box if you are the winner next week, and I will also remember to write down the winner's name. <laughs> Promises, promises. All right, are you guys ready to sew? We, these little stars are so easy to put together. You're gonna love them. It's going to feel like a breath of fresh air. You're just gonna have to do it several times. <laughs> okay, let's look at our schedule. So the Meadowland Quilt Along started a few weeks ago and we have done, we are on week five. So we are sewing up the star block rows Next week, we are gonna do the corner pin wheels, and I'm gonna have some good information for you on how to assemble those because you're not gonna just put together the blocks and then sew them in the corners. Because of the way they're nested in really tight, we're gonna assemble them in pieces and then sew them together. And then we have a week for assembly and a week for borders and finishing. So it'll be really fun and easy to do and you'll have some catch-up time. So the corner pinwheels are pretty fast. There's only four of them. And then, you know, you can catch up a little bit throughout the rest of July if you are um, a little bit behind, if you want to finish at the same time as all of us. Now, you definitely don't have to finish at the same time as all of us because these videos will stay accessible for you to watch um, all forever, forever and ever. <laughs> and really quick before we start sewing, Make sure that you get your spooky laying quilt pattern. You can get it today for 20% um, off in my shop. Um, and I also have the Haunted Adventure Fat Quarter bundles that you'll need. So 
you'll need fat quarter bundles, you'll need background fabric, and you will need um, bind, uh, border and binding, of course. So we're gonna sew that up starting July 31st. Um, and we'll go through September 18th, and then we will be all ready for Halloween so that you guys can get your stuff quilted and get it up in the month of October. So. Okay. <laughs> all right. So these are the cute blocks that we're making up. As I said, we are making up 20 of these. You're going to sew them together in a row of five, and you're going to sew them with sashing between them. And the sashing is cut two different widths. So you're gonna put the narrower pieces on each end and the wider pieces in between. That's again, all in your pattern booklet. You do have to buy the pattern to sew along. But, so you make sure you put your F pieces on the outside, your E pieces to the inside. Now, as far as the prints that you're going to use, you will need some of the fabric that you have in the kit or you will have needed to have bought extra fabric for your binding to use for some of the stars because there's not enough fabric in a fat quarter to do all the striped stars that I have. So I have in the kit and then it says on the pattern to buy a little bit extra of your binding for this. You're gonna use some of the same print that you have for your binding or if you're using your stash, you know, you'll need a little bit more than a fat quarter for these star points. If you are using from your stash or if you've decided that you don't want to use the binding fabric, then look and see what you've got left over that you can use for star points. They don't all have to be blue or they could be a softer blue if you want. It's, it's entirely up to you because it's your quilt. <laughs> so if you want to make it exactly as shown, then you'll need some of your binding fabric. And the blocks kind of alternate in the rows. Some are striped and some of them go stripe, floral, stripe, floral, stri let's see, stripe, floral, stripe, floral, stripe, and then some of them kind of alternate different ways. So you can kind of play with what fabrics you have and how you want to lay out your, um, how you want to lay out your prints. Sue says that if anyone has the AccuQuilt, she's used it for some of the blocks, it's a breeze to do. Well, that's great. Colleen says she's late. What did you name your kitty? I named her Adelaide. Thank you, Colleen. <laughs> oh, and Roxanne is excited about Spooky Lane. Oh, yay, I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so excited. It's gonna be a fun sew along to do. So you'll also need print fabric for the centers of your stars. For these, I used the um, barn print, the cute mason jars. I used this gingham with the tiny flowers. And on some of them, I used the blue farm animal print. So grab those if you wanna stay in the blues family. I also have a tip for you on cutting your background fabric. So in the instructions, I have um, the instructions written for this section for each star. So, you know, for each star, you'll cut a certain number of pieces and that is the same for the background fabric. But to make it a little bit easier for you, for the C fabric, you need 80 of the pieces of the C. So cut, you guys have your pencils? Cut four strips, three and a half inches by the width of the fabric, then subcut the 80 pieces. And then for the D fabric, you also need 80 pieces. So cut four strips, two inches by the width of the fabric. So if you didn't get that and you don't have your pencil handy after the video, you can scroll back, um, but it'll just help you so you don't have to kind of do the math on that. Of each of those C and D four strips, um, three and a half by the width of fabric and four strips, two inches by the width of the fabric. So that will help you guys speed up the cutting process math wise. So these blocks are really simple. They're just a sawtooth star. Um, with cute prints. <laughs> so what you need to do to start is you're going to pick your center fabric and then you also need to make your star points. So you're going to have a B, no, this is the C background piece and we're going to put the star points on here and we're going to make four of these. These are our A print pieces. So what you want to do is draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of your print pieces. So we're gonna flip this over here 
and I'm going to use the air erasable side since I'm sewing right now and I've put the the <laughs> the ruler lined up with the two corners here and I'm going to well let's talk about this first before I draw my marked line an easy way to check and see if you want to use directional fabric for your star points is just fold the piece of fabric in half and place them the way it will look and then you go okay so I do want my stripes to go vertically so when you let it go you know you need to draw your line that way and easy and for these star blocks on the stripes I have the stars all going out from the block so it makes it a little bit easier you don't have to worry about the two side stripe uh, going up and down also they can go out this way so it looks really cute like that and you can make all of your little flying geese which is what this section right here is you can make them all the same so for the directional fabrics always have them be in place horizontally so on before you sew the stripes are going to be horizontal and then once you stitch and flip you'll press it so that they're vertical so we're just going to draw our line this way and I'm leaving it on here so I know and then we know this one will go over here but it will be the the diagonal line will go this way to create that star point like that so we're only going to sew one at a time because they overlap and we can't sew them both at the same time but you're going to be making 80 of these because you have 20 stars to do. So mark them all, probably not with an air erasable pen <laughs> because by the time you get to 80, you will be um, wondering where your line want, went. <laughs> and then um, we will sew. So you'll sew chain piecing 80 of these, trim them, and then you'll do the other 80. So we are going to um, go to the sewing machine and sew. Rhonda's over on Facebook. Rhonda, you're our winner from last week. You won the um, the kit, the the sweet, what is it called? It's called Sweet Land of Liberty Kit. Send me an email, I'll send it to you. <laughs> Okay, Janice. Janice is worrying about, and so his free spirit, only worrying about 80. I know, only 80 of these, but I, because they're so wee, you guys, they're going to go really, really fast. <laughs> so we're going to do our cute little seam here on our marked line. And another tip I have for you guys is if your machine tends, not every machine does this, but sometimes when you're starting a half square triangle or when you're starting a flying geese your machine will try to eat the top ends of your cute little <laughs> flying geese um, you can do something called a leader which is a little bit of fabric that you run through and then it goes um, or you can flip your block and start sewing from over here and sew your seam this way rather than from that point it has a little bit more fabric under the foot and it's less likely to get caught. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna put our, our machine and we're sewing right on the marked line, not to the side of it like a half square triangle. And you can see the machine, um, which this one doesn't really have too much of that problem, but it didn't have any problems at all kind of starting or eating it. And when you're dealing with small flying geese pieces like this, if your machine does kind of bunch up on there, that can throw off the alignment of your flying geese. So this makes it a little bit easier. So let's go back to the machine, up to the, to the work table, and we'll trim this off, and then we'll press. Okay. So here's our cute seam. You can see that it is sewn right on top of that marked line. So we're going to place our ruler so that it, my quarter inch mark on my ruler lines up with that seam. And then we're going to trim this extra off. And then we'll press. 
Let's shimmy some things over so we have room for pressing. I'm all spread out. I'm a little bit of a messy crafter, you guys. What about you? Are you a super tidy crafter or are you a little bit of a messy crafter? <laughs> Obviously, I am the um, messy crafter. So you guys, I got a new cool flatter smell. This is the um, starch that I like. It's by Soak, that's the brand. And I this is a new scent of theirs. And check it out, Wild Mint. I like it a lot. I have not decided if I'm going to alternate with this or go back to my pineapple. I like it very much, but I I don't do um, I don't do change well. Let's let's just say it. <laughs> I like my pineapple scent, so I'm just going to hit this with a very light starch, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of press that back, and then I'm going to press my first one down. Now you definitely want to give it a good press before you sew the next one on because you're going to sew on top of that. So you want it to be really flat. I know it's easy to say, okay, I'm just going to finger press it or something like that, but it's not going to lay as flat and you won't have as flat and clean of a flying geese if you don't take the time to press. And I do like to press on the top, well, the bottom and the top, but the top gives it an extra super flat seam. So, <laughs> all right, somebody had a question. Um, let's see. Janice asked if I change the stitch length when sewing on an angle. I don't. I leave mine at 1.8 millimeters all the time. Um, Pamela says she has all of her fabric cut out for the stars this week. She'll be sewing tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> Fireworks and stars. Sue says she's been using a short, short stitch length on all the blocks in this quilt. Okay, great, Sue. Um... And Linda says she's messy while working, but always clean up after each project. Good job, Linda. <laughs> and Pamela says she's messy, but she has to stop and clean up a bit. Drives her mad to look at the mess. I get that. Janice says she gets migraines from scented items. She lives in an unscented house. Okay, Janice, Flatter makes an unscented version. So if you're wanting to try the product, you can get the unscented. It's a really nice, same exact product, just no smell. <laughs> Katarina says you always have to have everything tidied up to sew. <laughs> you guys are so good. I love it. Dawn says she's missing this week because of work. Oh my goodness, Dawn, those darn jobs. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and place our next square on. Remember, our stripes are going horizontally because when we turn them, we want them to be vertical. So let's take this over and sew. Free Spirit says she's messy but organized, an organized mess. Okay, maybe that's what I am because I know where everything is, but I'm a, still a bit of a mess. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to flip our block and sew from this side down just to prevent any little problems. And I have this laser that I leave on all the time. It just helps me keep my blocks nice and straight and tidy. And that is it for that cute little seam. So let's go back. That was fast. Let's go back and trim. Okay, how easy is this, you guys? So we're going to do the same thing that we did last time. We're going to put that um, marked line that's a quarter of an inch away from the edge and we're going to trim off our piece here. And now we'll press. And I'm just doing a quick little. Okay, so we have done this times 80. <laughs> and now we all we have to do is put our block together because that is there's no piecing of the center of our block or anything like that. And um, so now I've got my cute mason jars here and I'm going to put one of the star flying geese at each side. And again, I've got my stripes going out from the center of the block. So the top and bottom stripes go up and down 
and the side stripes go to the side and that gives us a really cute effect. If you feel strongly that you want all of your stripes to go up, then you can adjust how you sew um, 40 of these. You'll sew them a different way with the um, stripes angled up and down. Rhonda says she uses a 2.0 when pressing to one side or 1.8 when pressing open. Cool, Rhonda, that's awesome. Okay, so this is our block and we're going to sew it together like a nine patch because we have nine pieces. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm gonna take them over to the machine and we'll sew them together kind of like we did our other blocks. And we're gonna do that web piecing and chain piecing it all together. Free Spirit says only 79 to go. I know. Leona said that she has to go, but she enjoyed joining for as long as she did. Thanks, Leona. <laughs> okay, so it's a good idea to set your block out on your work surface, or you can grab a cute like little block board or something like that. So I'm laying my pieces out. I'm double checking that my star is aligned correctly, and now I'm going to start doing the web piecing that we like to do. So I'm going to place my first two row blocks together and I'm just going to sew and you can do this once all your pieces are sewn together for your um, all of your blocks or you can kind of do them one block at a time it's entirely up to you what your you know you kind of have to find what method works best for your brain <laughs> So I grabbed the second two pieces in the, this, uh, the first two pieces in the second row. And now I'm dra grabbing the first two pieces in the third row. And I'm making sure I'm not turning them because I want them to be aligned correctly when I get them all sewn together. And I just lift my presser foot over the seam allowance there so that it doesn't get caught and turned back. So now we open up our pieces and we have the first two of each row sewn together and we're gonna take our last column and we're gonna put it on here. So one at a time. So here's our first block, which is the last block in the first row. Last block in the second row, turning that. And take the time to make sure it's lined up correctly. You're saving time by chain piecing, but if you're not making sure that it's lined up correctly, then you're gonna have to um, unpick that all, and that makes us all quite sad. <laughs> all right, and then the last piece from the third row. And that is all of our rows sewn together, and they're held together by our little chain piecing and it's hard to hold open but that's our block so now we can press and then all we have to do are our top and bottom seams so we want to press this with the seams opposite each other so that they nest together nicely so we're going to press the top and bottom seams out and the middle seams in the middle row and you can do that all at once just kind of hold your fabric and move the iron down and then do it for the other side out in it smells minty in here and out <laughs> So I've done that on the wrong side, and now I wanna flip my block over and do it from the right side. And that also makes sure that you haven't caught your fabric funny or anything like that. So I just kind of hold the block steady and press each row one row at a time. And that gives us really nice flat blocks as well if you're pressing from the back and the front. 
All right, so here is our cute block. It's held in place by those little chain piecing webs. So now all we have to do is fold the top row and the bottom row, top row down, bottom row up, and sew a seam on each side. So let's go do that. Linda says she needs more practice with the chain of nine pieces. Okay, Linda. Um, that this is a great block to practice on because it you know you have to make 20 of these little guys. <laughs> Sue says she chain pieces the points and it goes much faster. Oh that's awesome Sue. So I'm not I don't need to put pins in here because I don't have a ton of seams to line up but I am making sure with my thumb and finger that my seams are nested. So I'm going to go ahead and sew. The other thing that you want to be careful of, and it's an easy thing to have happen when you're starting and ending your seam, is you want to make sure you're maintaining that seam allowance all the way through the seam. It's easy in the middle, but sometimes when we're getting to the top and bottom, we kind of shimmy over to one side, and that makes our blocks a little bit wonky, and we don't want that. So make sure even when you're getting to the very end that you're holding that seam allowance so that it finishes the seam all the way as straight as possible. So you can see we, we lined up pretty well here. <laughs> so now I'm going to flip the bottom row up and we're gonna do the exact same thing. We are sewing straight and I've made sure that that first seam is nested nicely. And I need to do that for the second seam. Make sure that everybody's playing along well. And I do tend to slow down where there's a lot of jumble of, of a lot of fabrics coming together in a seam. It just helps that presser foot to get over the hump there. And then you can see here's our cute little block and our seams nested really well because we pressed them opposite each other. So now all we have to do is press our top and bottom rows. So in the pattern, I um, have you press these to the, I think, top and bottom. Yes, but feel free to press these open if you prefer. It's 100% your choice. Kind of see how bulky your seams are and if you are feeling like they need to be open. So I'm gonna go ahead and be rogue here off my own pattern and I'm clipping my cute little chain piecing and I'm gonna go ahead and press these open. So I'm just gonna take the point of my iron, I almost said the point of my knife, but we have no knives. <laughs> so the point of my iron and I'm just using my fingernail to kind of guide that seam open. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom side don't forget to cut those little chain piece threads if you are going to press your seams open or else they won't lay completely flat. It's a good idea to have a cute pair of embroidery scissors on hand to do that because they're always nice and sharp and those points of the scissors can get in and cut those small threads easily so it makes it a little bit faster for you. So here is our cute lock. I have threads. That's okay. So again, I press from the back side. I'm going to press from the front. Make sure it's nice and flat. I kind of got a little wrinkle there in my fabric. But there it is. So cute, right? So that is all there is to the star block rows. So once you have all of your star blocks, then you will put them together with the sashing between them. You can't sew them in place until you have the uh, pinwheel blocks from next week, so you have to wait to assemble until your pinwheel blocks are done because they kind of nest together to create those a whole pinwheel block. So it's sort of magical, we'll talk about that next week. So anyway, I hope you guys have a lot of fun. Remember, there's no specific timeline, you don't have to be 
like right on target. If you don't get your 20 star blocks done this week, don't stress. I promise it's gonna be fine. There'll be plenty of time to catch up if you wanna finish on time because we have two weeks for assembly and borders. And then um, the other thing is, is the, the videos will be available for you guys to watch whenever you want them. So definitely don't stress. <laughs> I hope you guys all have a wonderful fourth tomorrow and lots of fun and a good relaxing day. I will see you guys next week for our pinwheel block rows. It's gonna be really fun. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to enter this week's giveaway. I'll see you guys next Monday. Bye. Thank you.